Hi, I'm Marissa Russo and I'm out here meeting Nick Holly from our city engineering department on this beautiful day in Sterling Heights and we're about to take a ride on the city's first ever bike lane that runs from 17 Mile to Utica Road. In every major city now you'll see a bike lane. Royal Oak, Detroit, Ferndale, Oak Park, um, Ann Arbor. These, and these cities we used as a reference for when we were designing ours. So why would we want to implement the use of a bike lane here in Sterling Heights? So one of the benefits of a bike lane is providing a safe place for cyclists to operate um, without you know, having to maneuver around pedestrians and dog walkers, skateboarders, rollerbladers on the sidewalk, and not having to worry about cars when riding in the roadway. It just provides them their own designated space where they can do what they do best. There are many reasons why we chose Plumbrook for our pilot program. It met a lot of the criteria that we were looking for. Uh, highly residential area, so it gives the bike path a point of origin for users to come out and use. Low speeds, Plumbrook is a 35 mile per hour road. We didn't really want to put it on anything that was higher, um, especially with it being the first one of the city. Connectivity that comes along with Plumbrook is very important. Uh, the Dodge Park Trail system ties into Plumbrook along Dodge Park. The Iron Bell Trail, which we know goes all across Michigan. These were very important options as to why we chose Plumbrook as our initial pilot program for the bike lane, uh, because it ties into these trail systems. Hey. Hey. So we're just west of Dodge Park Road at San Angelo Drive in Plumbrook. I know there's bike lanes in other communities, but ours looks like it has a little bit more safety features in mind. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Why don't we take a ride and we can pause at some of these safety features. All that's required is a, a four foot width and a, a single striped lane. Our engineering department took things a step further and implemented the buffer zone to provide extra security. We added delineators, we hashed out the buffer zone, we added green paint and heightened awareness areas. We took all the best practices that aren't needed but are preferred and made sure that we put them as part of this bike lane. There's four areas of the bike lane that we want to dive into. Um, the first being local road intersections. So when we approach these local road intersections as a cyclist, we'll notice the solid green paint strip. This serves a simple purpose. We're just trying to draw as much attention to this intersection as possible. So right away, I can see the green markings that we've talked about earlier. Yeah, so the idea behind them was that intersections like here at San Angelo and Plumbrook, we want to create as much awareness as we could. So the green markings should stand out to let cyclists and drivers alike know that, hey, there's something going on here. We might want to be a little extra cautious. Great. Let's go up to Dodge Park intersection and talk about some of the features up there. Okay. Our goal was to provide the intersections with as much safety as possible. So you'll specifically see delineators posted at these intersections. This is just to make sure that our cyclists are as protected and feel as secure as needed. Intersections provide a lot of turning movements for cars and cyclists alike, so we don't want any conflicts or any risk of anything when it comes to cars turning or cyclists turning. So here we are at the corner of Plumbrook and Dodge Park Road. Can you tell me a little bit more about this intersection? Sure, so the idea when approaching this intersection is we wanted to keep the cyclists and drivers separate. Um, the best way we did that was creating the buffer zone that you see here on our left, as well as adding delineators, which are to come. Um, the idea is that they just add an extra mode of protection so that you feel safe while cars have their turning movements here. And then I know that this will take you north to the Dodge Park Trail. Um, how would somebody get and move about this intersection? Sure, I'd be happy to show you, but the idea is that for the more experienced cyclists, they would just go directly through the intersection and on the crosswalk is where they would decide if they want to go north or south on the Dodge Park Trail. If you're more beginner or intermediate, then we suggest you use the crosswalk and safely cross the road. Hey Nick, what's the difference between these dotted lines and the dash lines? Good question. Dash lines signify that there's a higher volume of cars that are going to be intersecting with the bike lane here at this approach. Regarding the Shaner intersection, we kind of designed this one a little bit different. Um, so years ago when you would have, let's say, a right turn and you had a bike lane there, 
the cyclist was in more risk being on your right hand side if you as a driver were also turning right. Design guidance now points that we create a merging lane for right turn and cyclists. This puts the cyclist now on the left hand side of the driver for those who are turning right. All right, now that we've crossed Shainer, do you want to explain a little bit about what's happening at this intersection? Yeah, so looking head on at it, it can seem like there's a lot going on. You know, you got your right turn lane, you got your through lane and a bike lane right in the middle of it. But right over where we just rode through, over my shoulder, you see how the bike lane was on the right hand side and we decided to merge it and place it in between the two lanes. That was intentional. You know, the reason is because when you have a driver on your right hand side and they're going to be turning right onto Shaner here, you don't want a biker there. It just creates less, you know, risk and things of that nature. So instead, we take them, put them on the other side, now they're on their left hand side, and there's no conflict between right turn drivers and bikers going through the intersection. The through lane and the bikers will have you know, parallel strides going through the intersection and no conflict between them. Awesome, cool. <laughs> now that we've crossed Shainer and we've reached the end of the bike lane at Utica Road, what do we do now? It's up to you as a cyclist to decide what you want to do next. We recommend you turning onto the sidewalk and continuing on your journey, or if you like, you can hop on the other side of the road and ride the bike lane back down. Maybe go connect to Iron Bell or Dodge Park Trail. Really, the possibilities are endless. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. All right, let's head back. All right, see you back at the office. And we know you're going to have plenty of questions as we embark on this new path. So stay tuned for more safety videos and visit our website at strollingheights.gov slash bike lane.